Welcome to another cool tutorial in Chili Pepper. I'm going to show you how I made my dovetail joints. This is the first time I've done some real woodworking. Usually I'm using acrylic or aluminum. Uh, you can see the final milled out dovetail joints fit perfectly together. And uh, here the, um, is the Design Infusion 360 that I used. The first step is to mill the left side. Um, but before you start milling it, you've got to make sure you set up your correct Z0 and X0. So for doing that, I'm going to use the Super Touch Plate widget in Chili Pepper. It just got updated with some new features um, by one of the members of the community. And here I'm just making sure my feed rate and my end mill diameters are correct. i got to make sure I measure my Z Touch Plate. You'll see it's 19 millimeters. And then I'm measuring the width of my... Um, vice because that 25.5 millimeters is going to be the offset for that touch plate. So I enter the 25.5 and the 19. Once I probe it, I should then get the exact zero. So I'm going to go ahead and run the Z. Make sure to test this. You'll see in my first test run, I forgot to actually put the clip onto the end mill. So good thing I tested it. And then I'm, I'm probing the X side. Uh, bringing it back and putting in the piece of wood and then just testing out that I got my zero correct. So I'm going to go ahead now and actually run the left side uh, piece. You see in the lower right corner I actually put a little overlay of the Fusion 360 design so you can um, follow along on which piece I'm milling. Um, this entire piece actually will fit in my CNC machine so I can mill the whole thing. Um, that's important because on the longer pieces, the front and the back pieces, I have to do each end separately because it wouldn't really fit on my machine. So I'm just milling a pocket here, uh, and then I'm milling the dovetail joints at each end. In the final uh, pass, you'll see that it actually cuts the board off. That will give me my exact length for that piece. Um, and then we'll move on to step two, which is to run the exact same G code, but uh, mill it out a second time. And that's because the right end, as you're seeing in the lower right corner um, overlay image that I put in this video, um, that is really the identical piece to the left side. It's just rotated. So you don't even have to go generate any further G code. And uh, so you see I'm getting that pocket milled again. I get those dovetail joints. Uh, I'm running at about a thousand millimeter per minute feed rate, which is pretty fast, but wood is pretty easy to cut through. The 300 watt spindle I'm using uh, slices through it pretty nicely. Um, and now step three, we're going to do the back left corner. So again, this piece is too long for my CNC machine, so I've just got to do a corner. And so you see that the G-code is pretty simple for this operation. Uh, you can eyeball your Y position. And I did do just that because you, it doesn't matter what your Y is when you're doing these first pieces. It will matter what your, your Y0 is for doing the other end. So again, I'm doing the front side piece now, exact same G code. I'm eyeballing my Y0 um, and just getting this cut out. The next operation on this piece of wood is where you've got to make sure that your Y0 is correct. Okay, now the back right corner. So again, we already milled the back side left corner. Now we're milling the back side right corner. So for this, I had to just use a measuring tape to see that little black line I've got drawn in there with a Sharpie. That was measured from the other end, which was perfectly cut out. And then as long as I had that lined up, uh, I ended up with a perfectly uh, sized piece uh, for this operation. We're finishing up the front left side, and that should complete all four pieces. One of the things I found challenging in this project was how to create the dovetail joint. So I'm going to walk you through how I did it. Notice I set up my boards um, to be uh, overlapping each other. And that was just that part's easy. I don't need to walk you through that. But I'm going to start with this corner and show you how I created uh, the dovetail joint. So let's go ahead and uh, start drawing uh, a line. Actually, I'm going to draw a rectangle on this lower corner just to kind of get my bearings, bearing straight. So I'll go from here to here. And that looks correct, 37.7 on both. And then I'll draw a line through the midpoint. That little triangle indicates you're on the midpoint. 
And then I need a line here so I can get a midpoint as well there because I want my I want my um, that's just 37.7 I want my dovetail joints to just kind of jut out half of this distance so that looks good to start and I'll hit L for line again and I'm just gonna kind of rough draw these uh, the way that I envision them but you, um, it's easier for me to start out with square looking um, dovetails uh, and then make them be more of that shape I'm after to create the locking mechanism. So that looks pretty good. And then I'll hit D for dimension. And keep in mind, you've got one, two, three, four, five segments. And so this dimension from here to here should be one fifth the total distance. And so you can click on that dimension and then divide by five. It took me a while to realize you could actually click on dimensions to make other dimensions equal it. Uh, Maybe that was uh, something that was obvious to a lot of other folks, but I'm learning as I go along here. Uh, so we'll do that. Hit D one more time for this final one. And make that equal. And I don't need to do the last one because it should be equal. This is starting to look good to me. Now the part that actually took me a little bit to figure out the best approach. So I'm going to draw further lines based on how I think this should look. So that dovetail joint there, this joint there, and you can see it's starting to kind of come together the way you would expect. Now let's dimension further. So this distance from here to here has got to equal this to here to here to make a really clean sort of symmetrical shape. So let's dimension that out and let's go like 1.2 and then let's dimension this out and make it the same. So I will click again there and make those equal. And that should give this point right in the middle just based on geometry. And then this guy should equal this guy, this distance should equal this distance, and this to this, right there, this to this, is a driven dimension, which is great, oh, and then here to here, we will do the same, make that equal, and then this last one is driven. So good, everything's 1.2. Now let's hit T for trim. It took me a while to actually realize that this trim feature existed. It's now one of my favorite sketch features because it lets you do this. And now you can see it's starting to really shape up and look like a dovetail joint. Almost there. And last piece. Good, that is looking sweet. Now, though, you've got to take into account your end mill. So my end mill is 1 8 inch. By the way, that never seems to work for me. But you go back and add inch, and then it does. Okay, so think about how that end mill's got to get in there. So you want it to be, uh, you know, this and there. You want to get in that corner. So I just kind of use that for visualization, but you want to use this fillet tool and the you would think that you would do the same 3.175 but that's way too big uh, of a curve and the difference is the fillet wants a radius whereas the circle one wants a diameter so that's what we want now I'm going to undo that because I should not have hit enter I need to continue around the whole thing so 3.175 divided by 2 and then I can keep clicking all of my all of my corners to get them all looking the way I want. And that I'm sure to you is starting to look like a real dovetail joint. It's looking good to me. Okay, now the trick is the offset. This is another uh, command I've never used in a sketch. And you, I'm offsetting the wrong curve there. I want to offset this curve. And then this chain selection 
does everything connected to it. And I found just through some experimentation that 0 0.4 is the best for me in terms of kind of the wishy-washiness of the final milling um, because you're going to do it on each side. So you'll get 0.8 millimeter. Millimeter is pretty small, so the fact that we're at 0.8 millimeter should still give us a pretty tight joint, but still let us have some room to slide it in. Uh, so we'll go with 0.4 that direction, and then I need to offset the other direction as well. So negative 0.4, and make sure you chain that selection. We will hit enter, and that's looking good. The only thing is this little cleanup here, because when you mill, once you're cutting, you'll have this little curve here, which means this could get stuck, and then you're sitting in there with a little file trying to clean it up. So you might as well just clean it up right now. And I'm going to use this circle, and I'll just go deeper into this piece of wood where nothing's adjoining, so I have a nice exit spot. So to get that circle right on that, I used to just eyeball it, but why not use the constraints? And then I still, even then, once you have that, um, you're still not perfect. So I find that that circle to that line needs to be tangent. That gives me exactly what I'm after. Okay, let's get to doing some extruding. So we will click this, this, this. Plus I can't leave out this little guy. Well, might as well do both of those. And we will hit E for extrude. Got to change my angle here. We will overshoot it because it doesn't matter. And let's make sure, yeah. You know. But I only want to cut the left piece of wood, not the back piece of wood. And let's turn off the back to see how this came together. And that looks awesome. Now let's go back to the sketch and turn back on the back piece of wood. And now we're going to cut out this plus, oops, plus this plus this. And that's correct because I don't want to cut into it there. Hit E for extrude, bring it down, make sure everything looks good. And objects to cut, we only want the back, not the left. And bada bing, you got yourself. Ooh, we gotta extrude that too. Uh, should have I should have trimmed that circle when I had a chance. So we'll go negative, way negative, and I should only be cutting the back. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, we got ourselves a really clean looking dovetail joint that should take glue nicely and fit in there with plenty of uh, clearance. I wanted to show you how I set up my G-code file for this, uh, my G-code files for this project because I did find this to be a little bit challenging with respect to how to mill these uh, pieces because they're too long for my CNC machine but I figured I could mill one end and then mill the other end and that totally worked for me but I want to show you the trick I used of setting up the stock using some solid pieces and they're represented here by this little clear box there and this clear box here uh, it worked great for me and so the first thing I did was the left end uh, that was easy now my piece of wood was longer than it it actually extended this way and when you run the milling job, you end up completing it um, where you get a final cutoff and you get so you get an exact length of an end. Now this worked great for me because of course this fits on my CNC machine. This part wasn't clamped very tightly, the clamp was over here. So this had a little bit of looseness on it, but not enough to worry about for this project. And then the back left side, this is um, this is the first time I used this technique and it worked great you'll see that I'm only getting paths uh, where my origin is right here and it didn't matter where my Y was I could just eyeball it so I didn't have to get a perfect zero on my Y because wherever you start you're gonna end with right um, on this spot you know you'll end right here so whatever you eyeball you're fine you just end it with wood cut off the trick would be how to get 
this end to be exact, and I'll kind of tell you the technique I used. The other thing too is because this um, was all symmetrical, I could just generate G code for this piece once, but run it twice. And same thing here, generate the G code for this, but run it over here on this piece. So that was the second G code file. And then the third G code file, which is sort of my final little technique, um, was, you know, I had to do this path right here but the trick I used was to I'll show you measure from this point to this point and that was 56.6 centimeters because I had this end milled perfectly I just used the measuring tape to draw this or measure this line and just you know with a little bit of a pen like a sharpie mark that as my Y zero. And so that just became important to line that up correctly. I eyeballed that, um, but I, I did it pretty precisely because once you mill that, you should end up with this zero point to this point, sorry, uh, from this point to this point being exactly the distance you're after to get the correct length. So using those three techniques, as you saw in the video, the final piece came out perfect. And then last but not least, this little pocket area I just did manually inside uh, Chili Pepper using the zigzag macro. And I just sort of manually um, brought it down to the depth because I just didn't feel like generating G-code in Fusion 360 for that part. Thanks for watching. And uh, here's the final piece holding up the dollhouse. Go make some of your own cool stuff in Chili Pepper. Heck, it's free and all open source.